Grace and peace to you for the one who is and who was and who is to come. One of Jesus' favorite teaching techniques was to take something that people were familiar with and offer a new interpretation of that thing that preached the gospel. God's promise that healing, redemption, and life will always have the final word. He did this when he healed. He did this when he told parables. And he did this when he would say to people, you have heard it said, and then go on, but I am telling you. Since Jesus often did this, he often named one understanding of something and then contrasted it with a different understanding. I feel like I'm on firm ground to use this same technique. I also feel like the gospel for today is as good a place as any to use this technique because the challenging words Jesus speaks today have been given all kinds of understandings, some of which might not proclaim God's promise that healing, redemption, and life will always have the final word. Taking a page out of Jesus' teaching manual, then, I want to take a look at three things Jesus says in the Gospel today. Name one understanding of each, and then contrast it with a different interpretation. One I hope will do a better job at preaching that Gospel Jesus offers us in his words. When Jesus asked the disciples who they said he was, Peter said Jesus was the Messiah, the anointed Savior that God had promised to send. Jesus didn't deny that he was the Messiah, but he explained that he was a different Messiah than they were probably expecting. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes and be killed, and after three days, rise again. You have heard it said, Jesus must suffer and die to pay the debt we owe to God because of our sin. But I am telling you, that Jesus suffers and dies so God knows without a doubt what it will take to redeem us and to reclaim us as his own people. You have heard it said by theologians who are far more respected than I am that human sin, the brokenness that we bring into the world with us, creates a debt that we owe to God. We can't pay this debt. So Jesus, God's own son, dies to settle our bill. But I am telling you, this notion sells God short. This idea relies on believing that God is bound by some sort of logic or law that limits how God can redeem the creation he loves so much. If we affirm that God's only option in the face of our debt is to sacrifice Jesus' life to settle a bill, it robs God of the power to forgive that debt as a free gift given out of love. In other words, saying that God has to be repaid somehow, no matter what, robs God of grace. But I am telling you that Jesus suffers and dies because he has become fully human, and as human beings, all of us suffer and die. Through living this human experience of suffering in Jesus, God truly understands our suffering and knows without a doubt what it will take to offer us those promises of forgiveness, New life now, and resurrection life that's to come. The gospel in these challenging words is that Jesus, that in Jesus, God experiences the depth of human suffering and the reality of death on the cross, so that God can fully know the depth of our need for his grace and his healing. Jesus goes on, and he talks about the path of suffering that lays ahead of him. When he does, Peter takes Jesus aside and begins to lay into him for saying that this is what it means to be the Messiah. Jesus calls Peter Satan because Peter is tempting him with other ideas of what it means to be the Messiah. Jesus then tells the crowd, if they want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. You have heard it said, Taking up your cross means resigning yourself to the suffering that life sends your way. But I am telling you that taking up the cross is a consequence of responding in love to the suffering of others. Jesus has spent his whole ministry so far relieving the suffering that life has sent people's way. I don't buy the idea that Jesus suddenly turns around and tells people to sit back and resign themselves to suffering that happens in the course of our lives or our neighbor's lives. The same Jesus who sends his disciples to heal the sick, feed the hungry, and embrace the outcast is not suddenly giving permission to turn a blind eye to 
suffering under the pretense that it's just his cross to bear. You have heard it said that a calamity we suffer is a cross. You have heard it said that our sorrow is a cross, that your shortcomings are a cross. You may have even heard it said, that's just your cross to bear by the person who's allowing or even causing you to suffer. But I am telling you that none of these things are the cross. Because taking up the cross means being prepared to suffer because you have responded in love to the suffering of others. Jesus doesn't take up the cross because his pain and suffering themselves save us. He takes up the cross because the cross is a broken world's judgment on him for loving people the world refuses to love. Jesus is not calling all of us who follow him to seek out more suffering just for the sake of suffering. But he is calling us to act with love towards those who are suffering and to be prepared for the world to judge us and condemn us for loving people that the world has refused to love. The gospel, in these challenging words that Jesus speaks, is that Jesus knew how the world would treat him for showing us God's mercy and God's love. But he chose to love us anyway. Jesus concludes what he has to say to us this morning by telling us, those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You have heard it said, you need to be bold in proclaiming Jesus and his words to prove that you're not ashamed of him. But I am telling you, it's a great start to be bold in proclaiming Jesus and his words. But Jesus is also calling us not to be ashamed of people who suffer like he did. Jesus' words about not being ashamed of him are made even more difficult to understand by something else Jesus says in the gospel today. Right after Peter names Jesus as the Messiah, Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. This seems like the exact opposite of what Jesus is telling us when he says not to be ashamed of him. Jesus wants to keep the truth that he is the Messiah a secret, at least at this point in his ministry. Jesus doesn't want people telling the world about him until after his death and resurrection, because he wants people to tell the world the whole story. If people tell the world about Jesus before he dies and rises again, they might tell the world that the Messiah is a top-notch teacher, a marvelous miracle worker, or an excellent exorcist. Jesus is all these things, but above and beyond any of these identities, Jesus is our crucified Savior. So maybe Jesus' words about being ashamed have to do with the challenge of not just saying someone is a Messiah, but of living as disciples of a crucified Savior. Does looking at Jesus when he's crucified, someone suffering so much and so publicly, someone who has been made into an outcast on that cross, does this trigger our sense of shame? Does it make us want to look away and not have anything to do with it? Maybe Jesus is saying that if we feel shame, if we're embarrassed or disgusted when we look at a crucified Savior, we'll probably look with embarrassment and shame at anyone else who is suffering or an outcast. Jesus here is preaching sympathy, solidarity, and service to those who are suffering and those who are outcasts. Following a crucified Savior is a call to embrace those people who trigger our sense of shame, to turn towards the people we might want to look away from. Yesterday morning, so many of us came together and turned towards people who are hungry, serving with pack away hunger. We turned towards people who are desperate and suffering when we give to the mission of the month. We turned towards children who may feel like outcasts when we partner with Campagna Academy throughout the year. The gospel in these challenging words is that in Jesus, in our crucified Savior, God chooses to turn towards us instead of being ashamed of us. You have heard it said, Jesus talking about suffering and taking up the cross and being ashamed are hard words to hear. But I am telling you that even though these are hard words to hear, they still preach the gospel, God's promise that healing, redemption, 
and new life will always have the final word. I am telling you that Jesus speaks of his suffering because it's the way God knows without a doubt what it will take to redeem us and reclaim us as his own people. I am telling you that Jesus talks about taking up the cross because he knew how the world would treat, our, treat him for showing us God's love, and he chose to love us anyway. And I am telling you that Jesus speaks of being ashamed of him, so we remember that he is never ashamed of us. Thanks be to God.